I am live. All right, I'm getting ready to start the Global Summer Institute. It is 6.50. So if you are grabbing the recording of this, skip up 10 minutes, and that's when we're going to start. So whatever time the timer says, wherever it is down here, go up 10 minutes, and then we will start. You need to join. And meanwhile, I am going to post our link here on the website. I thought I was going to do that, but it's going to fight me. So I'm going to hit this. Copy again. Oh, YouTube, I love you so much. Right click, paste. There it is. Shift and highlight. Link. Does it automatically? Enter. Edit. Settings. Open link update. Update. Okay, so now any luck at all, this will magically show up on our webpage. And then everybody in America and around the world can come rushing in, play duets with me. All right, that's the front page. I don't take that photo very seriously. I should probably start. If you are logging in and you're hearing this, let if you are logging in and hearing this, let me know if the sound is good. Uh, it's not going to be good without the microphone. So, uh, let's see how's that how's that looking? Should I put the piano open so it looks like I'm smarter? Yeah, we'll do that. That'll make us look more musical, huh? All right, it's beautiful. Uh, got all these pillows on here. Okay, so let me get this microphone as close to me as I can without it making you mental. June, first one in. Yay, how am I sounding, June? Do I sound like I'm, can you hear me? I'm gonna rattle your speakers just a little bit. Carol, the sound is good. Good. All right. Nathrop in the house. Um, we get everybody logged in here. We had a busy day. We're going to see how many of these. You sound good. <laughs> you know, for Kermit the Frog, right, June? All right. Well, we're going to start pretty close on time. So those of you guys that are here early, you got eight minutes to sit around and tune up and double check your paperwork. Make sure you got everything in place. Um, I have a giant stack of stuff. I can't believe we're going to try to get all this done today. We're going to try. So, uh, it should be fun. I probably should start. You know, you know, normally when we do it here in town, it's, uh, hour and a half class with a break. And when we're doing it online here, I'm only an hour. And so I have to stop giving you guys so much work. Let's see. Janice is in. Yay! Hello, Australia. Sounding good and looking good in Sydney, Australia. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? It's just, I don't, it'll never stop. It'll never not amaze me that I can be sitting here talking at this computer and somehow I'm magically showing up in Australia. It's just, you know, this world we live in is amazing. It's kind of cool. Um, oh, Donna's speaking in. Let's find out what Donna wants. Hello, Donna. Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so let me tell you what's going on. Um, you know, there's this bug going around, and um, Megan went to coffee about a week and a half ago with somebody. They stayed apart, kept the masks on, did the whole thing, and uh, but he ended up somehow getting the virus, and so he called her up and said, you probably better bet check. Well, Megan's got no symptoms. She does everything right. She's very careful, uh, and uh, so, but she says, you know what? I'm still going to go get tested. Well, they say, we'll have your results in three to four days. Well, three to four days, she goes to log into the computer. The computer locks her out, so there's no possible way you can log in. And then <laughs> you have to call and wait on hold at this telephone line for hours and hours and hours. And so Donna has been on hold for hours and hours and hours. And they finally picked up and then immediately hung up on her. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. So I'm, we're, we're, we're pretty confident that she's, she's fine, but 
you know, you still want to follow these rules and, and they don't have the staffing to get it done. So rather challenging. Hey, if you're just logging in, we're going to start in five minutes, maybe six. Um, if you are logged into Google or YouTube, you can chat and say, hey, it's Janice from Australia or it's June from outer space or whatever you want to say. Let people know where, you, where you're from. It's kind of fun. Um, so in any event, uh, she waited all that time and nothing. There is this website you're supposed to go to. It locked up. And so then you have to call and they send you a code to unlock it. Well, that code doesn't work. And so it's been quite the thing getting getting Megan's test results. So she's fine, but we're, <laughs> we're doing what we're supposed to do, following the rules. Uh, Linda's back in. You got you. You got in early. Nice, nice. Um, Linda has been logging, Banjo Lynn. She's been logging the days and the hours with me. She deserves a medal. Put a gold star on her. Uh, she is. I don't know how many sessions you've been to, Linda, but it's a lot, and I'm really proud of you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cindy's in. I'm never proud of Cindy. That's one of the people that I'm always like, Cindy, ugh. Cindy is a fine, fine player, and I, but I have to push her and push her and push her to do the right thing. She always is trying to save a buck. <laughs> That's not true. She just bought a beautiful uh, Kamaka, and I'm a lit, this much jealous. It's not as good as mine, but it's pretty close, so very jealous. Hey, Cindy, welcome in. Hey, Mike. Mike just bought a new ukulele as well. He got a nice uh, Martin, which is exciting. Uh, Lynn has made it in. Yay, Lynn, in from California. Christine is in from Bozeman. Um, we have two people who log in almost every day from Bozeman, Montana. They're uh, officially the Bozeman ukulele leaders, and they're going to be in charge of all ukulele in Montana. And so if we have anybody else who logs in from Montana, we'll have to send them your way. Um, guys, we've got about four minutes. We're going to get started. We're going to start with key of F major. We're going to do the three arpeggios first today so you might want to go ahead and lay those out i've got uh f major g major b flat major and then we will talk about the d major we're not going to do anything with it tonight but i do want to talk because there is a technique in there that i don't believe you have run into yet let me double check i'm pretty sure you have it a technique you have not run into yet and so i want you to um, know what that is when you get there and um as you will notice, as you get further and further and better and better and more involved in all this, these little bar chords start sneaking in more and more and more and more and more. And so uh, last week's lesson hopefully gave you a little insight into what's, what, they're, what those things do. And then I would like to, you know, obviously um, talk about um, how, how, how it's going for you and what, what things we can do to do better. Um, out of the little book, is any one of these songs in particular something you love because we're going to pick one of the songs to sing today and uh, I usually do on top of spaghetti because I think it's funny uh, but let me know if there's something else out of here that you guys would rather do and we'll do that instead uh, maybe depends on if you pick uh, uh, what's the one I hated here <laughs> there's one that I oh wheels on the bus if you pick wheels on the bus we're not going to do that one all right let's keep going let's see who else is back uh uh, Mike is in. Burke comes during the day. Mike comes at night. And then they probably talk about each other. Like, what did he say? And they're like, I don't know. He just talks all the time. Uh, uh, Elizabeth in from Evans. Uh, Elizabeth, is Evans named after the same guy as Mount Evans? There's a bunch of controversy about that guy. Uh, Manette, good to see you in from Glenwood Springs. Very exciting. Diane is here from Littleton. Evelyn is back for more. Evelyn has been vlogging the hours with me as well. She's from Ecuador. Isn't that exciting? Uh, Laurel is in from here in town, as is Jerry and Terry. Uh, spaghetti is very... <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth is pro-spaghetti. Uh, we'll do two spaghetti songs that way. You know, you will become the, the most spaghetti-ified ukulele group in the world. Let's see. Linda's in. Welcome back, Linda. Uh, good to see you. Reds in. Bar chords don't just sneak in. <laughs> yeah, frankly, uh, you were everybody was just fine playing in the key of C, and that's it, right? <laughs> why, why, uh, why change? Let's see. 
Deborah's in today. She's doing good. Elizabeth, yeah, probably that's what I'm thinking. Um, they may have to rename your, your city. Let's see. Sandy's in. Hey, Sandy. Lindy's in. Good to be here. Kat's here. Kat brought her whole family in earlier today. Um, <laughs> they're probably like, we're not going back. That was ridiculous. So, <laughs> all right. One minute. One minute. It's 7 o'clock exactly. We're going to wait till 7.01. Uh, key of F major. That's what you want to have out front. That's that guy. We're going, to go, we're going to go through that. Give you a chance to ruin your hands right off the bat. Uh, let's see. Oh, they liked it. Oh, good. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Gary and Diane are in from Washington. Fran, Fran's back in. Fran's from New Jersey. Uh, they loved it. They loved it. Hopefully they weren't just being nice, Kat. Although your daughter's a musician, so they usually don't just blow smoke up your skirt. They usually, <laughs> she'd probably tell you the truth about what she thought. Let's see. Uh, Phyllis again from Ontario, Canada. Good to see you, Phyllis. Uh, glad you're here. Leslie, Leslie, uh, Virginia, is that right? I keep forgetting. I think it's Virginia. Anna's in from Boulder. Um, oh, good. Glad you caught up. Um, Anna, Anna's a music teacher and a very, very fine uh, vocalist. Uh, makes me mad. <laughs> People who can sing. Uh, Renee is in from right over there. Let's see. Michael in giant caps. Let's see. Aaron's Ufest was a little wet at first, but we rocked to leave it. Oh, yeah. One of, uh, one of our very favorite people in our orchestra, Aaron, uh, has been hosting uh, backyard ukulele get-togethers when they're in this giant circle really far apart from each other. So she keeps inviting me, but I have all these conflicts. So uh, I'm glad you went, Michael. I'm glad it was here. I'm glad it went well. I sent her a email. How did it go? And she sent me back this video that had nothing to do with the, the uh, how it went. <laughs> all right, let's see, Kat. Rob said you should change the name from Global Intergalactic. I know, right? As far as we know, this is the best ukulele class in the entire universe. So, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> uh, I'm, I like Rob. If I ever meet Rob, I'm going to give him a hug. All right, Kari's in. Leslie, yep. Yeah, okay, Virginia. I wasn't right about that. Paul is back for more punishment. June, uh, Kari. Give it, uh, anytime Kari walks in the room, there's a great deal of excitement. All right, let's play key of F major. And uh, remember, we've got some bar chords in here. Okay, and do the best you can with them. Again, it does not matter if you are a great bar chord player when you first start. It does not matter if I'm a great bar, bar chord player almost 20 years later. What matters is you know what you're supposed to do. You get the best possible sound you can at the given time, and then you move on. Okay, so let's uh, get our start on my bar chord, F chord. Let's do this. Okay, remember claw position. We're going to play down through measure 29, 30, 31, 32, and then we'll play, go back and play it a second time. One, two, three, four. Slide up. New pattern. Slide up. D minor bar chord.
hold on to your cord till the end. Um, if you were a new player, I just thought about this as I was playing along. Um, if you're a new player, this stuff is not, you're not quite, this is not for you, right? This is, these are warm ups that you should be uh, knowing what they are, but in terms of playing them, this is pretty tough stuff. We will get back to key of C major for you guys that are brand new or to the, to the program, uh, in a couple weeks, right? So, so. Um, just know every week we're going to be trying to do an arpeggio just as a warm up. That's what I want you to do at home with your practice time. When you sit down, which is every day, right? Every day for one minute, you're going to sit down, take out your music, get your ukulele in your lap, get it tuned up. That's the first minute. If you'll do that, whatever else happens after that is just duck soup. But what we want to do is really uh, start your lesson or your practice sessions correctly by playing an arpeggio, get your warm up in, play, don't try to get good at these, just play through them, right? Get And then, then after you get to the end of the book and you start over again, uh, you'll find out you can play a lot better than you could when you first started. And so they're just to warm you up. Let's go now to the key of G major, uh, the jumping fleet arpeggio for G major. Dun, 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 dun. And truthfully of the two, uh, the G major is a little bit, a little bit easier than the F1. The F1 has an awful lot of bar chords, uh, can tend to be a bit of a, a bummer. You get a whole lot of clunk, 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 clunk kind of sound. You get a little less of that in G, but you'll still get some of it. Okay. Uh, let's see who else is logging in. Uh, uh, oh, Vicky made it in. Good. Uh, and Kari Kim. Okay. Kari Kim is going to be nice. All right. Key of G major. Again, grab the chord and grab the grab your claw, and those are the two main things that you're going to see. You're not going to see any strumming until we get to page two, right? It's all going to be claw. Remember, we're going to play to the end of page one. And go back and do it again. Okay, from the top, one, two, three, four. Take your chord off, let it ring until it's completely finished. Okay, pretty decent clip, probably all pretty close, not quite all the way, but pretty close to full speed on that one. Uh, probably finding that your hand, fingers get twisted up here and there. Don't worry about it. You just move on a couple measures ahead and jump right back in. Um, 
this is the kind of stuff that if you're if you are really wanting to get better these arpeggios are really a, a good an important key to helping you get there and it wouldn't be bad if like tomorrow you said oh well i didn't play it so well come back to the recording just play these arpeggios and see you know try to get a little bit better at them um you, i make plenty of mistakes in in these things as well um I just I'm hopefully a little better at covering up the mistakes than you are, but I'm also thinking in terms of I don't care if I made a mistake. That's how I played it. I move on to the next measure. I just keep moving forward, um, and uh, I think that's one of the be benefits of playing with me or playing with the MP3 on, on that you can download from the website jollyrogerukulele.com. Um, so you can download all that information uh, and play along with the MP3s. We'll put them on your phone and slow them down so that you're a little bit easier. But the key is to keep going, right? Just keep going. You hit a bad note, you hit a bad note, whatever. Nobody, there's no bad note police out there that are coming, you know, knock you out. So uh, just just play through those 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 rough areas and uh, and then you know go back, try it a second time, see if you do it better, and then and then move on. Don't don't sit and dwell on this stuff. Uh, let's see. Anna asks, measure nine. It is it recommended? I leave finger two on the string when I play the fives. Measure nine. Uh, measure nine. Measure nine. Nine. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Uh, she's asking about this. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that chord, right? I'm never going to do anything, and it's a great question because it's an important thought in music. I'm not going to do anything I don't have to do. So if I'm coming in at measure nine and it's chord, chord, pinky, pinky, chord, right? And then on to the next idea. Um, I don't have to move the chord, so I'm just going to add that five and get rid of it. So uh, it is recommended to leave finger two on the string when I play the fives. Yeah, heck yeah. Um, plus, if you're leaving it on there, you're not running the risk of stopping the sound and then adding the five and putting it on right so so again and we talk about this pretty regularly during the day if you don't have to do something if it's if you can the longer you can leave your finger in a spot do it this instrument has very little sustain it will it will give you four beats under the best of circumstances uh and so yeah definitely don't don't lift up a finger unless you have to um and um i think that's what frankly a lot of times you know when i'm listening to even really decent players that's the difference between a decent player and a really fine player is how smoothly they can get all of their notes to run together. They stop them when they need to. I mean, that's what bar chords do. They allow you to stop them and be very efficient with them, but also to not be doing extra work and letting these tones sort of merge and work together to help you sound like a better player. Okay, great question. Uh, let's see. Um, by the way, I don't have a strap on this, okay? That's not on purpose. I need to put a, a, a doodly do on the bottom here and get a strap. What I'm finding is as I'm playing, these are complicated pieces. This ukulele is, ha I'm having a hard time holding on to it. Should you be playing with this strap? Yes, is the answer. You guys are playing really complicated stuff, even if you're brand new. Um, you're gonna wanna get a strap, get the, get a, you're gonna have to drill a little tiny pilot hole in here and stick the thing on, uh, the little metal, button on the end and I do it here at the shop all day not all day long anymore but I used to do many many a week um, just put a little button on here by the strap that has the leather thing here goes up over your neck has a little leather thing here and you tie it on on this end with a shoestring um, they usually come with a string um, but you can go to Amazon and look just type in ukulele strap and just don't get the one with the clip here because that's going to tear up your ukulele and the one that's got the wrap around it that people do that so they don't have to drill a hole in the bottom but that's just going to mar up your finish and you know you shouldn't care about the marring up your finish but why do it unnecessarily so get a strap get a strap get a strap is the end of that uh so sad i missed that uh, you guys go to that one. All right. Um, all right. Key of B flat major. When you see that on, on the top of the arpeggio, this is our last one for the morning. Um, basically, I'm just running through a bunch of them to get caught up, right? You guys know I'm running behind with summer issues. So <laughs> we're getting caught up on these. Key of B flat major, you see that on here and your heart just sinks a little bit, right? There's a little part of you that's like, I hate B flat. Um, I don't want to play something in B flat. Here's the nice thing about it. I arranged it all around the super complicated stuff so that you're not going to run into a terrible bunch of a problem. Um, with the bar chord part, you probably are still going to want to hold the bar chord, but it's going to give you the chance to play it one note at a time. So instead of, right, you're going to get a chance to go. And 
that's a beautiful thing, right? You're holding a bar chord, you're gonna hear every single note. Those four went pretty good, a little buzz on that last one. If I'm not doing particularly well, I might hear, or, right, that kind of stuff. Um, again, we don't care, right? We don't care about what it sounds like when we're working on etudes. We want it to sound better than it used to sound. And if it's your first time through, whatever you're setting a baseline for yourself, you'll go back over it in the next week and see, see if you can get it a little tighter. Um, but the big the big takeaway from this is B flat doesn't have to be scary. Try to put it into in, do the best you can, and then get those and see if you how clean you can get each of these individual notes. Also notice this is set at 80 beats per minute, which is very slow. So you are not supposed to rush through this one at all. You, most of the newer member stuff is set in 80 beats per minute because we're learning to do this stuff and we don't need to be rushed. Um, so we're going to take our time going through here. Notice your repeats. You, you, you've got to repeat at the beginning of measure eight. That means you're coming back to measure eight, not to measure zero. Um, and you're going to go all the way down and play through 24 to 5 to 6, measure 27. That's odd. Why would you go through 27? Uh, and then go back to measure eight. Again, highlighter. I'll show you. I got one sitting right here. It keeps it right next to where I do music. Um, I put a little piece of highlighter there, put a little piece of highlighter there. Then I, then I am less likely to blow my repeats. Okay, um, uh, I wish uh, I wish David would join us one of these times. When David first started, he plays bass in our on our uh, or orchestra, and uh, he 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 played through every single repeat every single time for years. <laughs> He's finally not doing that anymore, but uh, he just you know he gets so excited about making music and just just knocking it out, and he play right through repeats all the time. So a little piece of yellow highlighter will solve that problem. The other notation piece I want you to pay attention to because this is really going to be the one you're 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 using as your daily warm up. Um, we'll talk about D in just a second. Measure thirty one way down there at the bottom. It says double P. Okay, that means means double pianissimo. That means you should barely be able to hear it. I'm going to play it a tiny bit louder so that you can hear me, but. Barely can hear it. That's what that double P stands for. Just make it really soft and beautiful when you get there. All right, let's get our B flats on. Okay, this is from last week. You could, I like you to do a full bar, but if you do a half bar on B flat, perfectly fine. Okay, I'm going to do a half bar because I do, I cheat. Okay, we're in six, so we're going to have six beats in every measure. They're all eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six.
Oops. How'd we do? I probably could have taken a little bit of time to practice that one myself. Okay, should be having your thumb sort of being like, hey, dude, what are you doing? It's because kind of hurting right now. Okay, just take a minute to just stretch those fingers out. Do your our, our program of, hey, push this out, push this out, push this out, push this out, squeeze in, squeeze out. Now, don't ever push against a wall or each other hand. Just let your fingers start to loosen up, fill out. Okay, let's move that. Okay. Yeah. 80 beats per minute. Uh, Elizabeth likes the tempo. 80, 80 beats per minute is the best tempo, period. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's the three we were going to play today. Just, again, to get bar chords mixed in with open chords, be working on your claw, be working on your thumb picking. Just get a chance to play a whole lot of different ways on the ukulele. For me... I think the one message I try to send all the time is it does not matter if you're a great player or a horrible player. It matters that you're playing at your level and trying to get to the next level and that you're taking whatever piece of paper is in front of you and really trying to figure out what the heck is it about? How can I make it better? How can I make it my own? How can I take what's on here, really understand it, see how close I can get it if I want to or how weird and different I can get it, find some way to meaningfully act uh, in, in the, this. Um, and uh, it's pretty tuned, right? Fran, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I got to be honest with you. I, I was somehow really hit a home run on a bunch of these songs in that book. And so I really think that they're worth your time to play them. I want to show you one piece of information. This week, you're going to be starting to warm up on key of D major, probably finishing up your B flat. Um, you're going to see this marking right here, these little carrots going down. Okay, these little carrot guys going down. Um, what I want there, we normally we talk about thumb down, we talk about multi clawing, right? and we talk about this. Okay? What we hardly ever talk about, and it's a legit way to play a ukulele, uh, if I'm going to use the, uh, the G chord that's sitting here, um, what I'm wanting you there to do is a, a index finger going down quickly. So that's what we're going to want there is just that index finger going down quickly. It's, it's you can tell, a much different feeling of that sound as opposed to that sound. Okay, Most of the time I'm this guy because I just think the ukulele sounds the best that way. But that's a skill set we want to also be mixing in uh, so that you have all of these different crazy ways to play your ukulele. So that's key of D major. We'll tackle that next week. Um, wanted to talk very briefly about your ensemble certification page. Um, you are looking at this today, okay. blue counterpoint, <laughs> blue counterpoint, blue level certification. What we ask people here to do is play a duet. One of the things that happens, you, you decide, hey, I'm going to buy a ukulele. You go on Amazon, you have a glass of wine, you pick out the cheapest one they got. It shows up. It's not the right one. You should have got it. You talk to Gary. He says you should have bought a temper tenor. You, you put the... you. You, you put that soprano in the closet. It's still there, by the way. You get to tenor, you start playing it, um, and it never occurs to you that you might play with somebody else. And so that's why you're here. And especially tonight, you're going to be playing with me. I'm going to be playing uh, duets with you, and they're going to go, some are going to go great, and some are going to go terrible. Uh, but we want to get that notion started that if you're playing by yourself, there's a pretty good chance you're playing out of tempo. There's a pretty good chance you're speeding up on the easy parts and slowing down on the hard parts. We got to try to minimize that behavior, and we got to try to maximize your ability to be where you're supposed to be when the metronome or when the uh, other player or when the MP3 or whatever sort of metering system that you have in place tells you, "Hey, you're supposed to hit a D chord here." Not in a few nanoseconds because it took you a while to get a D chord on. So playing in a duet is incredibly important, and that duet can be with a friend of yours. You don't 
don't have friends because you're ukulele players, but if you've got one accidentally, probably another ukulele player, um, you're going to get together, you're going to play music together. It's going to go terrible in the beginning. Debbie and I, the first time we got together, now Debbie's a fine fine musician, fine ukulele player. I'm okay. I know what I'm doing. Uh, we got together and it was a disaster the first time because uh, I just was not, I had not spent enough time working on playing in tempo. And that's what a duet will help you do. So if you come play with me on the internet, if you come go grab the MP3s and download those, um, whatever it takes, you want to be playing with somebody else. And so the certification is we ask people in our orchestra to prepare two songs. On one song, one person plays melody, the other person plays chords, and on a, the second song, they switch roles. So, uh, so if you're playing chords, then you play melody. If you're playing melody, then you play chords. That way, it gives gives you uh, an activity, one to get together with a friend and do that. Now, getting together with people is hard. Now, that's why you're getting together with me, um, and. Uh, um, it's going to do a lot to really help your playing overall. And so I'm hoping that we can take this a little bit serious. All right. By the way, I found my, uh, you, you can get these on Amazon, this little uh, transposer circle of fifths things. I found it. Um, uh, like all the last few weeks we've been playing in the key. This is, has it upside down for some reason. Uh, we've been playing in the key of C, and we figured out that our best friend is F, best fr next best friend is G, and then A minor, E minor, D minor. Those were all good good buddies of it. Uh, but if I decided, hey, I don't like playing in that one. I want to play in the key of A. I just roll that sucker around, and now I find out uh, if my C was in, is now an A. All my Fs are now Ds. All my uh, G's are now E's. And all my uh, minor chords are sitting right here, you know. So you can get one of these on Amazon. Um, I buy it. I put it in the shelf. I never use it. I just show it to say, hey, isn't this cool? All right. <laughs> I want to take just a brief second to talk about um, something I want you to think about. Uh, the Every year in the summer, there's a, con a, a contest isn't the right way to put it, a challenge. Uh, to write 50 songs in 90 days. And I gave you the guys the website link on today's uh, Global Institute page, the 5090 Challenge. And what they do there, for some unknown reason, somebody came up with this random number, they write 50 songs in 90 days. What Now you know what's going to happen. A couple thousand people sign up to do it. About 30 or 40 actually do it. Okay, and what and it's a great opportunity for you if you are, have any kind of musical background or if you're brand new and you're like, hey, I really want to learn how to play the ukulele. You go and you do this 5090 challenge. I know from my experience, I, I spent a lot of time reading music on a piano, but it wasn't until I started composing music that I really felt like I understood how music works and why why Gary shows me the circle of fifths. I mean, I, all this kind of stuff. None of it none of it really came together until I started composing. And uh, and composing comes in a lot of manners. Sometimes you just write a silly poem and then put a ukulele on top of it. Absolutely fine. They love that over there. Um, when that challenge first started a bunch of years ago, I was the only guy on there playing ukulele at all. <laughs> and my first year, I did all 50 songs in ukulele. And, and uh, uh, since then, ukulele has become a thing. But what I do want you to just go check it out. Go look around, see if it has any interest in you. I will tell you, Elizabeth, who's over here in the chat box, uh, Elizabeth Singleton right there, last year did all 50. She did every day. She wrote me a note and said, I'm working on this one. I'm working on number 47. I'm working on 48. And I kept thinking, there's, you know, that's too hard. There's no reason. To, to do all 50 and boy she knocked out every 50 every one of them and she put uh, sheet music with all of them too which is insane um and i think um you know the jumping flea arpeggiator came from that challenge uh my uh, i've written three musicals and two symphonies and that came from that uh, i think uh just that sort of that feeling of hey i need to write a song today it doesn't matter if it's good what you will find if you write 50 songs one of them is going to be dynamite four or five of them, and maybe six are going to be really, really fine. And the other 46 or 42 or however many, they were just getting you ready to, to write the good ones. And so you're going to write a bunch of horse malarkey, but you will actually end up with four or five really, really fine tunes that you're actually proud of. And so give that some thought. Go on around the website a little bit and uh, see if that's something that's for you. I will be so excited to support you through that journey if uh, if you decide to do something like that. Um, I'm going to do some of it this 
this year. I'm not going to do 50. That's too many for me this year. But we got a few things going otherwise. But uh, I do think it's going to be a fun uh, activity for a couple of you guys. And uh, um, so that's that's something I want you to think about. Those of you who are thinking, yeah, I want to I want to put some music together and see what it's like. Let me peek and see. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff going on over here. I'm seeing I'm seeing your thumb a little bit uh, tonight. <laughs> no, you're not. You can't, I, I, I insist that that's a rule. You are not seeing my thumb. Um, I will tell you, guys, um, do as I to say, not as I do sort of thing. I do find that I have a tendency for my thumb to get up here, probably because I don't have a strap. I think that's. I think you're absolutely right, Laurel. My my thumb, because I'm busy trying to uh, hold on to this thing uh, and play at the same time. It's not ideal, and um, I do have a little bit of a tendency. My students are always very quick to catch me on it. Um, but yeah, so don't do what I don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> um, uh, it's not. It's not helpful. Uh, that's not like being stressed out. Yeah, right. Um, uh, uh, Fran saying, you know, when you're playing with another group, there's a stress associated, but it's a good stress, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I want to do really good for my group. And you, sometimes you don't, right? Sometimes you're terrible. And uh, like I'm the drummer for a group here, uh, uh, a more advanced ukulele, Kari's in it and a couple others. And uh, um, some days I'm dead on exactly drumming the way I'm supposed to. And some days my head is not there and I'm messing up the whole group because of it, right? And you don't want to be that. Uh, Let's see, Vicky says, that's why I record myself playing one part and then I go back and play the other part over my own recording. That's a super smart system, way to do it. Go ahead and take video or, you know, audio tape yourself playing the chords and then go back and try to play the melody over that. And of course, you're going to want to be as consistent on your chords as possible. Very, very smart. Very, very cool idea. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Elizabeth says that 59 thing is a chance to create something out of nothing and, and then it's yours too that's the other nice thing sometimes we forget we're busy playing other people's stuff the Beatles started off as a wedding band they were playing weddings and then they started copying uh, the Everly Brothers and this kind of stuff uh, and and getting better and then one day John and Paul sat down and said why are we doing that guy why don't we just start writing our music and they wrote it i think almost every day for for a couple decades uh and it worked out pretty good for them uh so uh yeah uh, bruce asks uh, oh bruce is just in late he's up in bozeman he, he he didn't go all the way to billings to hang out with vicky and uh, christine because he's scared of them uh but yeah he's up in bozeman tonight is there an easier way to do the sheet music without penciling it in those notes uh, kind of boring and tedious cindy uh, so so the question really is an important one how do i get this stuff on paper it seems very tedious and boring and bleh. um two things you should know about that um i write probably as much sheet music as just about any ukulele player probably as much as many uh, uh, other musicians to be honest uh, there are probably arrangers out there who write more than i do but you know for the most part i'm writing continuously it's incredibly boring it's incredibly detailed back when i wanted to be a novelist i thought that was going to be challenging that was a walk in the park compared to being a music arranger and a music writer um, and yeah it's incredibly tedious what i have found is i want to i really really do if i don't have time to write it down i make sure to do a, an audio recording of whatever i'm doing because i'm gonna forget and then as i have time i go back through and try to figure out what the heck notes i was singing and playing and that sort of thing um and so um at the very minimum you want to do an audio recording uh, but you really don't have anything as a songwriter until you've actually written it down and can share it with somebody else and so yeah incredibly tedious and incredibly boring we will have later this summer a uh, session on Muse score. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it here on this YouTube. I may have to do a video recording of it and then do that. But uh, Muse score is the one software package that I'm recommending for you to look at if you're brand new. If you're thinking about writing a little bit of ukulele music, Muse score will do what you need it to do. I don't use that program, but it's free and a lot of people are using it. And so we'll have a little bit of a workshop on that. Um, again, don't think writing out music is ever going to be fun. It's not. It's really not. It's very tedious and very lonely. <laughs> and uh, um, and the minute you get it done, you think, okay, I'm done. And then you find out, you look at it six weeks later, and you find all these mistakes. So, um, uh, yeah, that's writing music. Uh, great to see another Bozeman person just passing through. Uh, all right, so there's all those guys. Okay, beautiful. So let's talk about this book. This was your homework, okay? Um, we're going to play uh, spaghetti uh, on top of spaghetti. It's page something 
page 12, please. We're going to go page 12. Now, everybody sings this one a little different. You're going to sing it my way, okay? We're playing a duet today. I'm going to sing like the Dickens. I'm, I, I'm going to just belt it out, okay? You're my backup band. If you look at um, American Idol, there's this pretty little thing up in front, and then in the dark shadows in the back is a band right guess who what's going on there the band is keeping the beat but if the little cute little girl up there singing or cute little boy up there singing uh gets out of timing that drummer is going to have to adjust in order that that singer has the best possible presentation if it's a professional band where there's a singer up there they're not adjusting for that person at all in fact they'd like them to be off um, but the idea is that you've got a, a backup band you got the band you got a singer right i'm going to be your singer today you're going to be my backup band i'm going to have to also be a backup band so i know where i'm at um, if you're newer Here's your chord, remember? A chord, index finger, middle finger, that's A chord. Let's hear it. Beautiful. You got a D chord, index, middle, ring. Okay. E7, index, middle, ring. Okay. That's this was the first part of your homework. And then back to A. Okay. Let's sing it. Um, you and Beethoven can do it. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I tell uh, people who don't like using uh, the software to make music and it's boring and all this. Beethoven used a quill. <laughs> a quill. A feather that he dipped in a pot of ink and wrote what he wrote. We're okay. We're doing fine. We, we, we can we can handle it. I think that's a really good point, Cindy. Um, Gary, sometime would you consider playing something for us that is your fave yeah i'll consider it <laughs> um yeah i'll play you something not 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 in the next couple of weeks we'll find a time when i'll bring in a couple of um original pieces that i wrote that i think are 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 nice right um and uh, you guys can let me know what you think i don't usually push i try to only push a little bit of my own stuff because i don't i don't want you to think that I want you to listen to my music. I want you to listen to your music. This instrument is not about listening to other people, generally speaking. It's about you creating the music. I want you to not be, I want you to be less of a consumer and more of a creator. Um, and that's what it, why I think ukulele is so important. So, but yeah, thank you, I, I mean, I think that'd be fun. I'll bring in one or two. And I think that, uh, um, I think that would be interesting for me too. <laughs> okay. All right. On top of spaghetti, page 12. If you can't remember your chords, pull the little front page out and set it right next to it so that you can look over when you forget, okay? You're my backup band, okay? Maybe you sing with me, maybe you don't, but the important part is you're strumming in the same same ways that when I'm on a D chord, you're on a D chord, okay? One, two, oh, it's in three. So I'm going to sing in two, and then we're going to go. One, two, on top of spaghetti. All covered with cheese. I lost my poor meatball when somebody sees. I'm going to speed it up. It rolled off the table and onto the floor. Hang on. 
to your meatball and don't ever sense. Hold it till it finishes ringing out. Question is, how would you, how'd you do with my backup band? Okay, let's try to make the tempo a little different a little bit, you know, just give you a little bit of challenge. Um, if you're coming in about where it's supposed to be, that's ideal. If you're way off, then we want to work on that a little bit more, spend a little bit more time just playing through the book, coming up with your version. You might sing this a little bit differently. Um, uh, I, 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 I like it because, you know, it's a fun one to sing. Kids love this song. Every time I sing it, they come up to me afterwards. They say, you didn't sing that right. You know, and so they, they, there's that. Um, the other joke that goes with this one is, um, this is a song of hope, right? You lose your meatball, it rolls down the thing, it turns into a spaghetti tree, you know? Um, which leads you to the conclusion that the conclusion is wrong. If you eat spaghetti all covered with cheese, hang on to your meatballs and don't ever sneeze. Well, then if you hadn't have done that, you wouldn't have gotten the spaghetti tree. And so uh, so the conclusion is wrong, uh, but uh, there you go. All right, now, that was for those of you getting started and learning your A chord, D chord, E7 chord, very important stuff. Those of you who are ready to do bar chords, we've got... A chord on four, F shape on four, D is C shape on two, E7 is your D, well, it's your C7 on four, okay, and then back to A, okay? Now, some of you may want to do the more complicated D, which instead of going down here and doing this, you can also go up to five and make it the A shape, and that's also a D chord, okay? We're going to play through it once with D chord, and then we're going to transpose it to A flat, just for fun. Okay, see what happens. All right, play bar chords if you can, if you can, right? If you can't play bar chords, play your regular chords. One, two. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. Somebody said it rolled off the table and onto a floor. And my poor meat ball rolled right out the door. It rolled down the gutter and under a bush. But mush. The rain came and soaked it as wet as can be. And early next summer, it grew to a tree. The tree was all covered with beautiful moss. It grew lovely meatball. That's with the bar chord. Very different effect in the sense that the, the overall ten, ten, uh, timbre of your instrument is higher, just generally speaking. Uh, uh, and then you also have control over, hey, I want, I want to last this long and then lift up. I want to last really, really long and don't lift up. You got a lot more control over um, the feeling of that. It ends up feeling almost a little reggae if you, if you were following my strum pattern, but you didn't have to follow mine, right? You're coming up with different ideas. Now, we're not going to do the whole song. Let's pretend that that's not working for your voice and you need to, to do it. You need to drop it a half a step. Okay. If you're on the piano, you got about a 30-minute project figuring out what your chords look like. Okay. On a ukulele, all we do is just drop the bar one. So instead of playing an A, I want to play it in A flat. Okay, so that's instead of on four, it's now on three, same shape, just down one. The D chord, instead of being here, will now be down one. Okay, and the E7 chord, instead of being on four, will now be on three. If you're using the other D chord, you're here at A flat, you just go up one and put your A shape on it, and that will be your D flat. Okay, let's just try it and see what happens. We don't need to do the whole song. 
A chord on three, please. One, two, on top of spaghetti. All covered with cheese. I lost my poor me. When somebody says, it went off the table. And onto the floor And then my poor meatball Rolled right out the door Okay, so that would be how you transpose. If you're singing a song in A and it's not working out great for your voice, try moving it down one fret and playing it exactly the same way. Or try moving it up a fret, you know, to fret 5, play it in A sharp or B flat. Right, and see how that fits your voice. Um, we often ask as instrumentalists because we're stupid, we say, Hey, singer, what's your key? And they never know because they don't know because it depends on the song. And, um, you know, if their singers are much more about their lowest note and their highest note, and usually they have the skills in between all of those notes to hit all of the, the partials, uh, but uh, not always. And so sometimes they're like, Well, it's, it seems like it's in my range, but I'm not, the key isn't fitting into my voice pattern very well. Um, and so you can try changing it just a little bit either up or down just to see how it goes and uh, um, you will do that as a more advanced musician and frankly it comes up a lot in ukulele because every single piece of paper that you go look for on the internet some song you love from being a teenager turns out you are playing uh, a guitar song and it's in the key of E and playing E on ukulele isn't that fun until you learn bar chords and then you can play anything so again bar chords are not something that's going to go away for you guys you're all at this top level and you're all like I don't really like bar chords I don't like them either but they're, they are part of what's going to happen in your life so so get comfy with them let's see uh, Beethoven didn't have correction fluid right <laughs> have you ever seen his manuscripts they're a wreck I don't know how the typesetters ever read them and then uh, Cindy says friend I just used an eraser yeah, that's our right out. Okay, ready? We're going to now go see how many songs we can play in the next 12 minutes. Okay, what I want to do, I'm going to play melody sometimes. You're going to play the opposite. If I play chords, you play melody. If I play melody, you play chords. We're going to do duets the rest of this, the rest of the night. Okay, grab Tilly Tilly Bone. Tilly Tilly Bone. All right, your chord is F. Um, those of you who've been around in the daytime know this is also F, right? Or maybe you take your F and put a three on the bottom. Okay. Find a good F for you, and there's four beats in a major. One, two, three, four. If that's all you can do, that's awesome. Right? One, two, three, four. But maybe you double it up. One and two and three and four and. Or maybe you arpeggio. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or maybe one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So as you were talking about that, um, find maybe change it up each time we go through. I'm going to play it as written. I'm going to go down to measure uh, five, back to one, play down to measure 11, back to one, play down to measure to the bottom. Okay, let's give it a try. You're the chord player. Rhythm. Be, keep, be consistent. Okay, I'm going to play melody. One, two, three, four. Dilly, dilly, bum. To the top. Six, two, three, four, two, three, four, to the top.
slow. Um, that's a tough one, right? Because the me the rhythm is or the melody is really crazy, and I can't hear how you're playing the rhythm at all. So I think I actually sped up quite a bit. So let's go back through. This is an F, but why not an F sharp on the first part of the staff? This is it. This so Cat asked. This is an F, but why not a sharp on the first part of the staff? I don't think I understand the question. Uh, Oh, I know why. <laughs> I heard the, the key, we're in the key of that. We're in the key of C, but the chord we're using is F throughout. It's the fourth all the way throughout. I don't know. It's it's lullabies, right? Anytime you have a one chord song, it gets real iffy. Um, whether you need to be on the actual correct key chart or not. Okay, great question. I don't know the answer to it, Kat. You don't need. It doesn't need it. <laughs> um, there's, you'll notice there's no. Uh, G sharp or uh, B flats in here anyway. It's all A flats, um, and you get that when weird sounding songs. Uh, yeah, that's that's how you make them sound weird. You put them on the wrong wrong type of uh, thing. Great question. Okay, instead of playing uh, chords this time, we're going to play My Spaghetti Monster. You're playing just the melody, just the melody. Okay, don't play the don't play the tough acts. All you guys memorize the tough acts, tough uke. Uh, play just the melody. Okay, I'm gonna play the chords. One, two, ready, play. My spaghetti monster playing ukulele, flying through the rainbows with my heart. Tasty marinara, yummy parmesan, where Pasta farines. Let's slow it down. Two, three, four. My spaghetti monster playing ukulele, flying through the rainbow with my heart. Tasty marinara. Yummy Parmesan, we're pasta farians. One more time, even slower. Three, four. My spaghetti monster playing ukulele, flying through the rainbows with my heart. Tasty marinara, yummy parmesan, with pasta farians. Uh, I missed the last chord. Okay. That's with me playing every other beat. It still feels kind of fast. Let's have me play every single beat just on the beat, and you guys play the melody one more time, even slower. One, two, three, four. My spaghetti monster playing ukulele, flying through the rainbow with my heart. Four tasty. Yummy Parmesan, we're pasta farines. One more time through. Three, four. My spaghetti monster playing ukulele, flying through. Tasty marinara, yummy parmesan, we're pasta farina. So 
kept slowing it down, 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 slowing it down. If you hit it dead on the first time, you were probably fighting slowing it down. If you messed up the first few times, you're probably getting it better and better and better the more times we went through it. And so hopefully that's a little bit illustrative illustrative of uh, what you are, what's going to happen to you in real life is hey let's let's slow things down until we can play them then you can always speed them up right i did it the opposite way i started too fast got it got it slowed down then once you're playing it well slow then speed it up okay um and cat the more i think about it the reason that it's not in f Tilly Tilly Bomb looks like it's in F. It is actually in C. <laughs> it's actually in C. The the key is C, but we're using all notes from the F and borrowing from a, a few other non-associated tones. That's why there's those A flats in there. And so it's probably most correctly an F minor is probably the the chart I should have put it on, probably. Um, all right, I want to play Brahms Lullaby. I'm going to play the melody. You're going to play the chorus. This will give you a little bit more to do. Okay, quick, three beats per measure. Keep it steady, one, two, three. However you wanna do it, either plucking or strumming. Three beats per measure, I'm gonna count in two. I play the first two notes and then you come in. One, two, strum, strum. Hopefully you strummed through that last measure and then gave me a big big chord at the end there. Brahms lullaby. Hopefully that's going well. That was kind of on the fast side. Hopefully those chord changes are, are nothing for you. Maybe they're brand, if you're brand new, super, super challenging. Last one we'll do tonight, we'll do Yankee Doodle. Next week we're going to play um, the other ones, all the other Can't Help Falling in Love and Law Hallelujah and all those other ones. Um, so this week I'll have that as part of your homework assignment. Um, and the other homework assignment to this week will be Go play to one of the MP3s. Some of you do it on a regular basis. Some of you have never done it. But I want you to pick any song you're working on off of the website. And as you guys know, we're up to 96 the last time I looked. So we're going to cross over 100 songs on the website here next week. Um, pick one of the songs that is good, that you enjoy. I want you to go through, put that MP3 onto your phone, get you the Tempo Slow app to get it there. And then we're, and then next week we'll try doing a couple of these. I'll actually bring my phone. We'll set it here. It'll click 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 and we'll try playing along with the actual mp3 and see how we do it's a very valuable skill i don't know of all of our advanced players i'd say 95 percent of them use those mp3s on some level to really hone in their craft really get the, the, the details down on each song really looking for those places where we we tend to lag like on that song i know uh uh, and babies we bed. I tend to lag on that note every single time. I heard it today. I heard you guys go strum and there's no Gary there. Um, and uh, so so use those MP3s. I'm going to give you an assignment this week on uh, uh, over email to say, hey, go download it. Go down. Go pick a song off the website that you like. Go download the MP3 and then spend the week playing it to your phone. Right. That's your duet partner since you can't go out and get a real duet partner right now. Um, and so let's let's use that. Uh, let's take advantage of that opportunity to use one more skill to get you really, really good. And that, in my mind, uh, uh, it's just one more thing we can be doing when when we can't get together uh, to be ready to get together and to have just another tool in our toolbox. Um, hey, here's what I know. Um, most of the 
great guitarists of all time, like the the list, you know, Jimi Hendrix and all those guys. Uh, Most of them did not take formal guitar lessons. They played to records in their basement. That's what they did. And they got really good. And so I don't think it's a bad idea. We don't want to have to do it all the time because we don't want to be those guys. But we do want to get better. And so I do think there's some real value in that. And so I'll send you out via email a little more detailed instructions on how to download it and how to use that tempo slow and all of that. But uh, even if you don't have a tempo slow app, just pick a song that's kind of slow and then start playing along with it on the MP3. Um, I think you'll get better and make you make you feel stronger in your playing and give you a reason. Uh, it, what the MP3 or playing with other people? I serve as a metronome, right? Right now, I'm your metronome, and I'm a lot, hopefully, more pleasant metronome than you usually have. But the idea is, we want to get where we can play with other people, and the way we do that is to play uh, in time. Okay. Now, final final song of the night, uh, Yankee Doodle. Not the great way, greatest way to end the day, but uh, it it's it'll work. Okay. I'm gonna play the tough X, tough Uke, tough Uke. I'm playing Tough Uke, okay? So there's a good chance I'm going to blow it at some point, right? Because you guys know it's hard. I want you to pick either melody or I want you to pick chords, either one, okay? Uh, we're in four, and so playing chords will be kind of kind of interesting. Uh, find a way to play whatever you're going to play. If you decide to play melody, you got to play with me and, and do exactly, you know, don't get ahead of me or behind me, okay? Play right with me. Um, and um, let's see how that goes. Okay, from the top, one, two, three, four. How'd you do? Whatever system you decided to try, how'd you do? Goal, as always, play along, keep up with whatever you're doing, keep up with me. And if I, if you blow it, you got to just skip over a major or two and jump right back in. That's a really, really incredibly difficult task. Um, fascinating fact. Um, as a conductor, uh, you are in charge of the band. You're, you're, you're telling them how fast to go, how to slow down. Unless there's a soloist. If you have a soloist, then they're in charge of how fast you go. So when I conduct and I have a soloist, I'm constantly looking over there. Are we in good shape? Are we doing fine? Is everything going great? You're not to keep getting too sad. We're not going too fast. We're not going too slow. They're basically the soloist in charge. The lead singer is usually in charge, right? The lead guitarist is usually in charge. But those two people really, really, really depend on a good, consistent rhythm to do what they need to do correctly and so the drummer if there's a drummer in the band very often it's he's actually in charge even though he's sitting in the back and he's drunk um he, that's the guy who's usually t- telling you how fast we're going to do this song um a lot of times the conductor looks like they're in charge not necessarily if you've got a big brass section they may end up uh, running uh setting up the actual beat of the music and uh, so a lot of times the people that you think are in charge are not necessarily in charge depending on the song what the situation situation is and so uh, it's a reason why lead singers get paid better than the rest of the band because they're the star they're up in the front they're calling the shots they decided if they want to make a note last too long they're going to make a note last too long the rest of the band has to adapt and it's one of those activities that's kind of fun to work on uh, when you first get started it's a little aggravating so uh, that's what I got on duets uh, it's it's weird not being able to hear you but if we were in a room together you'd probably be messing up so you I'm gonna pretend you played perfectly uh, just like I'm gonna pretend I played perfectly even though the video shows differently and uh, we're gonna end up uh, being really proud of ourselves next week make sure that you have a chance to play to an mp3 I will send out an email which one we're gonna play to next week uh, next week I want to go over standard notation that line up there uh, and it's exactly goes to cat's question hey how come there's not a sharp on this one well I think it's actually an F minor is what the the, the thing should so there should actually be a, flat, a couple of flats on there but uh, let, let's talk about um, 
what those dots are up there for. For those, some of you are brand new and you're like, I know there are dots up there on that chords and lyric line, but I really don't want to know what they are. You don't need to know everything about them, but you do need to know a few things. And so I want to talk about standard notation just a little bit. Some of you come from a musical background and you think, oh, I've got to learn how to read a ute that music for ukulele. I keep telling you, you don't, but I also am not discouraging you from learning. So uh, there's that. And then I want to talk about uh, uh, we'll play fall, can't help falling in love guys that are working on finger style stuff i want you to be ready next week uh we'll do come josephine and my flying machine probably is a duet uh we will try tackling uh the the, the trap trapeze one uh again there it's uh it's got a lot of just simple notes to it might be fun to read that one sh uh, sheet music wise uh, standard notation wise and then hallelujah we're gonna play it i don't really enjoy that song but a lot of people like it so we'll do that one i may toss a few other songs up on the on the website so just keep an eye on the global thing could go by and check it sunday nights usually is the best time to check that that'd be monday afternoon for you uh uh, uh australians right and so um, i'm always like i hope i some i hope in this hour on Monday nights has some kind of meaning like you can take something away and give it a try and see if it makes you better that's what we're going for um, and that's what I got tonight so hopefully you played well hopefully that we we made a beautiful duet partners uh, and now we can go uh, have a beer okay so have a wonderful night guys the news is ghastly so please 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 stay inside don't be don't be pushing it right this is this they're finding out that the stuff just hangs in the air and all this stuff. It's just it's just better to stay home, right? Let's let's take care of yourselves and play some ukulele and, and you don't need to be hanging out with your family. They're they you never really liked them anyway, right? So uh, let's say goodbye to everybody and you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, so I'll see some of you tomorrow. I'll see some of you next Monday night. Uh, tell your friends we're making we're making magic here and I want to I want everybody on the planet to play ukulele. So uh, get get. Uh, don't be shy about telling them what you're up to. All right, where do we leave off? Uh, Kat says, thank you. Learned a bunch tonight. As usual, excited to play. <laughs> yep. Bar, still working on bar, bar chord clamp, cramps. Guess what I was working on here a little bit? My bar chord cramp. Okay? It's going to be with you for your lifetime. Uh, it gets better, though. It, it really does. Uh, Deborah, uh, I hate to sound too dense, but I haven't been able to find the MP3 link. Is it the MP3 link on a computer? If you're looking at a computer, the MP3 links are over. There's a little widget over on the right-hand side, and it says all of the songs. And there's 96 songs on in there. So try that, Deborah. If you still can't find it, um, I'll send you a, a little more information via email about that. I mm -hmm. uh, should find it on the far. If Don't go on through there on the phone because it's way down at the bottom on your phone. On a computer, it's over here on your right side. Well, go to there on your phone. If you go on the phone, it's way down toward the bottom. It says all the songs. Uh, Lynn, have a great night. Renee, uh, uh, thanks, Renee. I appreciate your studenting. Have a great night. Uh, Lindy, have a good night. Minette, uh, good to see you, Minette. Miss you. Um, let's see, Kat, from this. Okay, she helped her find the MP3s. Thank you, Kat. Uh, again, uh, have a good evening, Phyllis. Uh, let's see, Bruce, be good up there in Montana. Good to, good to see you guys. Hope everything's going great. I'm jealous. Uh, Cindy, Cindy says it was excellent, so it must be Janice. Lots of good stuff tonight. Uh, you're looking better and more helpful. <laughs> I'm not better looking than a metronome. I might be more helpful, but I'm not. I'm not better looking. Uh, let's see. Thanks so much, Jerry. Yeah, Leslie, keep those. Keep those. I, I am convinced. I am 100% convinced. Those arpeggios are the are the pathway to advanced uh, musicianship. So please, yeah, I love that. Keep playing them. Uh, uh, Pauline, have a great night, Carol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go check out 5090. Wouldn't it be fun to write 50 songs this summer? That could be there could be 49 terrible ones, right? You just need one good one. Uh, Anna, <laughs> good, good to see you, Anna. Uh, by the way, Anna, you, you, you get get real good at that that little book because you're gonna be singing it. Uh, Laurel, is that a highlighter? I don't know what that is. That a beer? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a firework, maybe. I don't know what that is. Uh, do you like? Thanks, Vicky. Those arpeggios are good. They really are. They really are. They're they're old school, but they definitely will will work to make you a better player. June, good to see you. Thanks for being here. So excited every time you get to see you. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you got 48 more to go. Get on it. Uh, let's see. She's killing it already. Michael, good to see you, bud. Uh, I don't have one of those phones. I know, Deborah. You're just gonna have to click play right there on the on the website. Okay. <laughs> Who doesn't have one of those phones, Deborah? We're all wait. We all drank the Kool-Aid. We were we feel required. 
Um, no, you don't need a, you don't need the phone. You can absolutely just click play on the website and it and the music comes out. You just can't adjust the tempo. That's all. So that's a, still a very good useful way to do that. All right, kids, be good, be safe. I will see some of you tomorrow. I'll see the rest of you somewhere down the road. Keep playing ukulele. It is the answer to happiness. Have a great day.